Sure, yeah, you have to. All right. Uh, just a quick question. Do you prefer Hollywood or Genie? Like, I wasn't sure. Whatever you want. <laughs> you, can call, you can say Hollywood. Most people, you know, say Hollywood. That would okay. be better. Yeah. Let's do nice it. to meet you, by the way. <laughs> yes, likewise. Thank you. Uh, we met We met briefly at a, uh, I think it was a WrestleCon in New York, um, in Queens, before pre-COVID. Uh, I I've done several of them. Yes. Nice to see you again. <laughs> yes, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, for everyone who's watching, I'm joined today by the legendary Hollywood. Uh, you do so much. I, I don't know, like, should I start with stunt woman or author? Or, like, what is it that you currently want to? <laughs> uh, well, Mike, you know what? I started as a wrestler and then I went to stunts. And then after stunts, there were conventions, the, uh, doing some book stuff for friends, trying to work on my own bio. Then COVID came before COVID. Then there was soap, started making soap, which is like my side gig. We could talk about you. that. Yeah, I have a little soap company. So yeah, and, and I continue to do the conventions as long as the promoters are asking me to come, I am graciously there. So do you find that there's there's still a lot of like glow fans, especially now? I mean, the show's been out for a couple of years. And do you find that there was like a resurgence of oh my god, like everyone from Glow, I gotta go and get their autograph? Yeah, well, as soon as you know. What made that happen? Obviously, the Netflix show when they, you know, did the three seasons of Netflix. That just put us back on the map again, um, and I love it. You know, regardless if you like the show or you don't like the show, it doesn't matter. It still puts Glow on the map. So when we were doing these uh, conventions, I gotta be honest with you, we were at LA Comic Con, and people were like, "Oh, we, I love the show," and they were talking about Netflix, and they thought I was on the Netflix show. I go, "No, no, no." <laughs> No, I go, I'm the original glow girl from that time. So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Was that, you know? was that your first job at the original glow? Um, actually, yes. In front of a live on, well, I had done one thing before, no big deal. It was some extra work on a movie. Um, and I was in a lab currently drawing blood. So, um, uh, this particular thing that I did, um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was an agency that called me and they called me for this glow uh, audition. So that's how that happened. I was, you know, drawing blood somewhere and uh, got the audition and then, you know, beat out a bunch of girls for, they only needed 12 girls and to do a pilot. And I was one of the 12 that they chose out of all those women to do this pilot. We saw the pilot, you know, I moved to Vegas and then I did four seasons, right. so it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Let me, uh, in the time that I have, I'd love to ask, um, what, what was the best advice that you ever got? During that time with Globe? Oh, yeah, no, it, it could be in general, but you know, if you want to keep it. Gosh, above. you know what? I think the advice starts when you're young, the way you're brought up. So my best advice really is from my parents, treat people the way you want to be treated. I think that goes a long way, um, especially now with social media, people, you know, behind these screens doing this and this, you know, bullying is huge and I hate it. I don't like it. I think that, um, you know, uh, that, that's just one huge thing. So it starts at a young age. So if your parents are, are telling you how, how to, that goes, how to treat people that goes a long long way that sticks with you i just had a 40 year reunion uh, over the weekend and i haven't seen these kids in a long time and a lot of them had come up to me and they knew about glow and at the end of the night i had several people say you know what we know you've done this and you did that but you are still genie you are the girl that we went to high school with do you know that was just that warmed my heart because no one's different than anybody else. I'm not different than you. No, sometimes people get bigger breaks. I wish I could do other things, but you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. So it's all good. I'm always humbled. And, and like I said, gracious to get whatever work that's thrown towards my way. Right. Are you surprised by the, the, the legacy of Glow? Like, are you surprised that you know, all this time later, we're still, it's 2022 and we're, we're still talking about it? 
you keep you're freezing a little bit. Um, so go back again. Just say it one more time. Sure. Yeah. Um, so are you surprised at all by like just it's 2022 and we're still talking about glow? So are you surprised by like the legs that it that it's at? <laughs> yes. You're going in and out. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, I'm just making sure you can. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so actually it's 2022. Um, surprise, yes and no, but you know people if they're doing their gents and they're looking at the history of women's wrestling then they will remember glow if you're a huge glow fan or wrestling excuse me if you're a fan then glow pay, played a pretty big part significant part in some of the ladies that came up after us you know if you think about uh a wwe doing a 30 women's tag team match last year they never did that before who did that we did we were doing that in the late 80s so you know i think we broke that uh that's that glass ceiling for them and you know and i do my due diligence because i've read up history i love history about anything really and to see the ladies that were before us laying down that foundation you you can never ever forget the legends you know they were here before me so What's your what's your favorite topic in history? Ooh. It's changed a lot because it started as um, world history, uh, Indians. Um, then as lately, like during COVID, history of movies, directing. Isn't that interesting? Because now I'm in the house a little bit more and I'm sitting there doing my side gig, which is my my soap company and i've got the tcm channel on which i love turner classic and just watching the acting the directing part dialects clothing unbelievable so it's changed a lot but i love learning and i think that's one thing that's also awesome asking questions that's one thing i've always done how does this work well how do i do a website oh you're going to do the website for me no 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 let me figure out how you're doing the website so I could do it myself. Yes. So, yeah. What with the soap company? I would love to know, like, where where that originated from and, like, what <laughs> did that? Yeah, wh yeah, what about that? What is that about? So I think it was 2018 because that's when I started. I was at a mall and I saw all these cool soap and a lot of them had these essential oils in them. This is good for this. Peppermint is this. Eucalyptus for this. Tea tree oil for that. And I'm like, and they smelled really good. And I'm like, I'm going to check this out. I'll do some due diligence. I'll get some books. I'll get some videos. And I love anything that has no preservatives in it. At least that's, you know, I'm not huge on everything that has to be, I like meat. I like a good steak. Uh, you know what I mean? But if there are certain things I can put in my body or on my body that's better, why not? And so I did it and I thought, well, I'll just share this, you know, to my sisters, to my mom, uh, friends, and um, they liked it. And I'm like, why don't I start a soap company? I'll call it Hollywood Botanica and um, I'll sell it. And this is before the pandemic. So here I am selling soap before we really needed to wash our hands as much as we need to wash our hands. So um, I kind of was ahead of that curve. And um, I, I, I just made some this morning before I'm talking to you uh, for Easter. I love it because it's very calming, BJ. It's so calming for me. So if I get off the road um, the next day, I'm just putting ingredients together and creating. So basically everything in the soap is organic coconut oil, olive oil it's either shea butter or mango butter castor oil i've been using coconut milk instead of um, distilled water to make it more moisturizing and then a little sodium hydroxide that is it besides uh either fragrance or an essential oil and then billy corgan from nwa he has a tea shop in chicago called uh madam zuzu's and he wanted my soap in his store so i made them from her for his store which is really cool and awesome. then i have some other stores yeah you know my thing is it's a side gig it's not you know i just enjoy it it's right. very cool was there anything yeah. that surprised you in insight in just setting up this side gig that you learned and you're like oh i, I wish i had known that before i started I say repeat the first thing you said was there anything that surprised you um, oh surprised me 
Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. When you are making soap, you can watch videos all you want, but those people have been doing it over 10 years. So they don't give you those little like, oh, this particular fragrance or this essential oil is going to accelerate your batter. What does that mean? What does accelerate mean? That means you better work really fast because the batter, it's called, it looks like batter. That's why I'm talking it about saying it that way. It's going to get hard. And if you get hard soap before you've even mixed anything, you're in trouble. You got to start over. So yeah, there's a lot of little quirks. You just can't go in there. I, I heard one girl said, anybody can make soap bullshit <laughs> that is not true that is not true you can make it yes but there can you make it good can mm. you make it smell good can you make it look pretty i'm still learning but you know what i have over three years in my belt so i know which what to do and what not to do but that took some time now i only have a few more minutes uh, left with you so i wanted to ask real quick who would you love to give a spotlight to? Like whose work do you really like that you love to just tell people about? Oh, work that I love. There's so many, gosh, in any genre? Any genre. Oh, that's tough. I really enjoy a lot of, I don't watch a lot of it, but there's a lot of WWE women who are doing so well out there. Um, God. Charlotte Flair, uh, you know, these ladies have been working. I, I think they're far ahead than we were. That's for sure. Their work is great, but there's, I, I can't really name. Oh my gosh. That's a difficult question. What's yours? <laughs> uh, that currently inspires me. Uh, yeah. There is a book called the index card. Uh, it's a little blurry okay. because of my Zoom. That's back. okay. I see it. I and, see it. Uh, it's basically everything you need to know about managing your money in your life. I need, I need, I need that book. So you know what? That's going to inspire me. <laughs> so you have to send me that link. And I almost forgot about one more thing. I am an ambassador for a new company called Aces. It's a CBD rub. Nice. And it's so cool. It, it is. It's called Aces Joint Repair. Look at that. Check nice. that out. They made it. They made it my colors. They made it Hollywood colors. And it's a, it's a CBD. I've been using it for a year. And this is the funny thing. Because I was using it, I didn't know when my friend wanted me to be the ambassador. It was this stuff. So that is crazy. And Chuck Garrick, actually, from uh, Alice Cooper, the bass player, he's a friend of mine. And he had been telling me, we want you. And I just, our, our schedules weren't meshing together. You know, he's on tour. I'm doing this. And then finally, him and I did uh, a commercial together um, like three weeks ago. So this stuff is pretty cool. So, you know, I love it. That, it's, a, awesome. it's a cool thing. Yeah, no, I've been heavily into CBD the past, I'd say the past year and a half. Uh, for our, This is manufactured in Oregon too. Where do you live? I'm up, you, right now I'm in upstate New York, but I'm also over in Woodland Hills in Los Angeles. Of course, yes. You're like me and you. I'm in uh, Nashville right now, but I go home to LA uh, every month. I love that. Yeah. We uh, have a lot in common. We have we, a lot in common. We do. Let me ask you, where, where can people find you? Like, where can they check out all your stuff? Or Beautiful. I appreciate that. So uh, if you're a, a Twitter person, it's at Glow Hollywood. Instagram is official Glow Hollywood. The soap is Hollywood Botanica. Uh, and you need to spell that with a K. And that's the Instagram. And there's Facebook too. But, you know, you can just look under Jeannie Bassone for, for that one. Oh, this is great. I, I said... Uh, right at 125, we would be done. It's 125. Oh, you're so kind. We'll need to come back and do some more because I've got conventions coming up in June uh, in oh, Jacksonville, yeah. Florida. Uh, that's, oh, my comic. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. BJ, we have so much. I got a brand new comic by, written by John Crother. Uh, the artwork is by Carlos Tron, and I've been doing a lot of those. So yeah. for those in the Jacksonville area on the weekend of uh, June 11th and 12th i'll be in jacksonville the i think it's called the river riverside uh wrestling convention or river walk i'm not quite sure but um you know there would, it is yeah i would love to have you back and talk about the comic um we, we can let's do that we'll yeah. set that up and um i i would love that and i thank you for your time and and uh uh um, having me on your show. Very yeah. cool. And send me the link of that. Yes. Lovely oh, book. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm yeah. 
because we recorded it on Zoom, I'll turn around and I'm going to upload it right now. And then this might be people. That would be awesome. I would love it. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time. We will chat again soon. All right, BJ. I'll talk to you real soon. Thank you, dear. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye.